Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 4th of December and yeah, we're going to do an update on Bitcoin today. It's been a couple of weeks since my last video, so yeah, I thought we needed to get another video out there. Um, in today's video, essentially, we're going to have more of a focus on the shorter term price action here in Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, that's what we need to break down. Last time I spoke, price was around this level here. And obviously, I mentioned, well, sorry, in fact, it was up here. And I explained how I was very concerned about this being a bull flag and I felt that it had weakness and was going to come down lower. So that is how it has played out. Uh, but now we need a further update. What can we expect to happen next? So that's essentially what we'll be focusing on in today's video. So if interested, then stay tuned. Alright guys, so uh, before we get started on the video, I uh, just want to mention um, because I've done a um, Black Friday deal uh, the other day, I posted it on Twitter, you'll see here, I put out the, the tweets, it expires on the 6th of December, essentially it's for my cryptology course, uh, the link to it is here on Twitter, I'll put it in the description to the YouTube video, this video also. Um, but yeah, basically it's 80% off the first month. And um, if you check out my website at wave618.com, you will see that uh, Cryptology is £50 a month. And so 80% off is £10 for the first month. That's the deal. So it's a nice way for those of you who want to check out what this involves, you know, get a real taste for it. It's a, the cheapest deal I've ever done and it expires in two days time. So you still got time to check that out if interested. But yeah, essentially what it is, cryptology, it's I cover the top 15 market caps uh, each week. On top of that, you get an invite to the Discord community. And I do encourage you all, if you do join, to join the Discord because I do put out the updates uh, out there every so often. And um, on top of that, you do get access to the my full educational course now these modules if you're on the subscription uh, payment uh, like cryptology provides um, then you get the modules are released over the course of three months and you can only have access while subscribed if you want longer term access you would have to buy the works which is also easily found on the website at wave618.com um, and if you want discount for that, check out the links in the description. There is a 50% discount on that as well. All right, without going into that too much, now let's focus on the Bitcoin chart. So yeah, essentially in my last video, we were talking about price up at this point here and we have obviously broken down. Now I've mentioned very, very importantly, this pitchfork and I've mentioned, I think on Twitter and to my group also that this is the main thing the most important indicator for me to determine the sentiment in bitcoin at the moment price is adhering to this pitchfork absolutely beautifully and um, i will be using this to determine when we're um, switching sentiment to or or losing the bearish sentiment and switching to an uptrend and essentially what I'm looking out for is price getting above the upper median line because it's never done that throughout this um, downward price action here and yeah if you've been watching my previous videos do check out my last video if you've not seen it yet if you want a better picture of my longer term analysis because obviously since our highs in December 2017 uh, I've anticipated all of the price action following as a major wave for as I say, I'm leaning towards it being a symmetrical triangle at present. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, for further information on that, do check out the last video because it will take a bit too much time going into it in this video. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I've been look anticipating price making another lower low. I've been calling for a price to come down to around 5,800. I do think we're still on course for that. However, I do think we may get a test of the upper median line before we roll over one more time and come down to make that further lower low. So I will justify that looking at the shorter term price action in just a moment. Um, so in fact, we can we can go on that right now, actually. So let's go in on the 15 minutes. 
So we can see here, let's go on the hourly first. So the last video I did, price was up here, I think. And um, yeah, I explained it was looking really weak. There was no way this could be a flag for this move because it had gone on too long. Basically, the flag was 10 times longer than the pole. Yeah, so that's not what you want to see with a, f a flag pattern. So it basically suggested this whole price action was a continuation of this whole big corrective move down. And it looked like it just wanted to come down further. That's exactly what we got. So anybody who saw this as a major impulse, sadly, they were wrong. It's got taken out. And um, yeah, that's what, one of the most important things in trading. Don't be fooled by fast moves in price. That can easily be justified by an, uh, a catalyst. In, the, in, the, in this case, it was um, the president of China, Z, making an announcement about Bitcoin. Price flew. But don't forget, um, speed, yes, usually it does go... The speeds of the move, uh, sorry, the fast moves typically go in the direction of the major trend. Typically. But it's not a rule. OK, in this case, I had it as an ABC. So this was A, B and this was our C. And don't forget, C waves are impulsive. They are made up of five waves. There was a nice five wave count and it suggested the completion of a correction and that it was going to come down lower. Uh, essentially, that's what we've seen. And um, yeah, where have we found support right off that lower meeting line? As I say, this pitchfork is all you need to really go off at, at present. Since that, we've seen a bounce up to the median line, come down to here, and then we've hit our median line once more. Now, what I want to do, let's just talk about this price action. This is obviously where we're at right now. Uh, as I say, I do think we're going to make, I think there's a good chance we come up and test the upper median line before rolling over once more. Um, and I'll explain that with the, by looking at this price action here. So... Let's just bring on a few labels. So the best count that I've got, uh, let's put on our Elliott wave counts. All right. So what I've got here, first of all, it I don't think this is a one, two, three, four, five. OK, there is the argument that that is a leading diagonal, you know, a bit of a converging type pattern and you can call it a leading diagonal. But um, yeah, I don't I don't particularly like it. Um, I much prefer this count, so I've got an ABC up to here, and then following that, we've got a, an expanded flat, so an ABC, yeah. So, yeah, th this is the best count that I can give at the moment. So I just posted this to the group actually this morning that it was looking like we could have bottomed out here. Another reason uh, we've got a block. Uh, just bear with me. This one here. So I had drawn this on. Basically, it's, it's just very simply looking at the consolidation of where most of the price action was here, marking out the highs and the lows of that range, and we hit the bottom of the range. So we were looking for around 70-70 to find a bounce. We hit it very nicely. Uh, we came down in what looks like a five wave C, uh, subwave count of a C wave. So we've got a one, two, three running flat four, then fifth wave coming down. And then we've gone into this impulse coming up. So where have we found resistance? Back at the median line. Also, obviously, we're going to have a little bit of difficulty getting above this level at 7800, purely just because of the overhead resistance from this consolidation here. But obviously, we're still on shorter time frames. It can easily cut through this data. So um, I wouldn't be too put off by that. OK, now another point of significance. Why do we see this bounce here? There was another point that I was um, mentioning to the group that was particularly significant. So if we pull on the 0 0.5, as I say, this pitchfork is very, very significant. We get a beautiful bounce off the 0 0.5 line. That's our thin green line here. So your median line is here. This is your one line, one standard deviation away from the median line. And the, and the warning line is two standard deviations away, which you can't, okay, you can just about see it here. But basically, another line that I often like to look at is the 0 0.5 line. I don't put it on as a default because I'm very happy with just the uh, lower median line and upper median line, as well as the warning lines. But 
when we're, when we're just fine tuning the chart, looking in on the, uh, the smaller time frames, it is useful to look at. And when you see that confluence with the, we've got the 0 0.5 line, we've got the, this block, this range being hit. Um, and then we've got the Elliott wave count, the ABC, very nice corrective completion there. Uh, there was a good shout for it to go up and call this a bottom. And that's exactly what we did. We've found resistance here. Now, there's the, there is the chance it can roll over, but from an Elliott wave perspective, I can't really see it suddenly rolling over here. I think it is going to make uh, a move above the median line, and I think we're going to test this upper median line once more. I can see that playing out. Um, so let's just tidy this up a little bit. Let's take off the 0 0.5. So the way I'm looking at it is this is an ABC, so it's basically a, a double zigzag. So we've got a, uh, an ABC, and this, this is our X wave, and then we have another ABC to the upside. And if we just do a fib extension of our first ABC up to here, extend it from the bottom of our X wave, which would be down here. And so coming up to the upper median line, you got potentially a test around 1.382. So that would be a very nice extension. A uh, very regular Fibonacci extension level for price to target. So, yeah, that's what I'm leaning towards at present. That's how I see it playing out. So I do think we, as I say, we can progress up to this level. So we're looking at around 8,800. It's possible. Obviously, at present, we are in a bear market. Yeah, short term. Short term. So we're following this picture up very, very nicely. I wouldn't dream of... Um, being long-term bullish just yet. Uh, if I were, as I say, I think price is coming down to 5,800 first, but my mind will be changed only if price convincingly gets above the upper median line. That would be the first time it's really done that throughout this correction. That would be a really good show of strength. But until that happens, I, I will have every opinion that this is going to roll over and form another lower low um, with a target around 5,800. So... Another reason, basically 5,800, it's a preliminary target and it's, it's based on, let's go on the daily, it's really based on this range here. So we've, we've hit the top of it at around 6,500 and now, uh, I, but I think probably the bottom of it is going to get tested. So if we just plot on those horizontal lines, so they just mark out the, the top and bottom of this range. So this level 5,800 is the bottom of the range that I'm closely looking at. I do think we could test that. As I say, I think we're probably going to come up to the upper median line, probably come back down to our lower median line. And this is scheduling it for the middle of January. I don't like to you know, predict what's going to happen too many steps ahead because the more steps ahead, the less accuracy you can have. So, But first things first, I think most likely we progress upwards to 7800 though that in itself is probably a bold call because this is a downtrend at present and these median lines are holding very nicely we're at the median line which typically acts as a significant resistance and support level and currently we're on the south side of that median line so really it's not that wise to make these calls about price going to the upper median line really until price closes nicely above the median line but as I say using the Elliott wave count I think that's what's most likely to happen with a move up to around 8800 all right so that's really focusing in on the shorter time frame analysis and then if we just zoom out I'll just briefly explain my let's take off these Elliott waves it's just going to get in the way now um, take those off take our rectangle off all right i'm going to leave this pitchfork on it was the main talking point of the video uh these horizontal lines could be taken off um so yeah essentially the bigger pattern at play here i'm looking at it as a symmetrical triangle and of this triangle i don't think just yet i don't think that this leg down has completed so let's label it so we've got A, B, C, and D and E. Yeah. So this is the way I see it playing out with C coming down to a preliminary target around 5,800. But mainly what I'm looking for will be this downward um, pitchfork to offer support. Yeah. So 
And as I say, once this, if this um, block of data here gets taken out to the downside, it's a little bit concerning. Um, so obviously, if that does happen, the market could tumble down a lot lower. I'd be happy for it to come down and perhaps have a, a weekly wick to the downside. But if it convincingly closes beneath 5,800 or beneath 5,500 even, then I'd be very concerned about the other count that I had for the a major wave four, which would be this is a W, this is an X, and then Y brings us down lower to 2.2K. If you want more information on that, check out my previous video uh, where I go into that in a lot of depth. But as I say, this is uh, what I'm looking at at present, the symmetrical tri triangle playing out. So we're reaching exciting times. It's nearing, um, nearing the completion of this C wave. As I say, I would be happy to change my count if we get above this upper median line. There was a point where I was looking at a potential ascending triangle. Um, ascending triangle would be as such. So that's your, your top line. And that would be your ascending line. And I was looking at it as an A, B that is not yet finished. Then you get your C, then you get your D, and then you get your E. And um, that was how I was initially looking at it. But I think it's less probable. Basically, there was a pitchfork holding price here for this upward move. And we broke out of it to the downside. And typically, you would get a nice channeling pattern when you get these double zigzags to the upside. And that's why I'm, I'm thinking it's less probable at present. So, yeah, as I say, symmetrical triangle is the, the count that I'm looking at. As the most likely scenario at present and uh, if that fails as I say if it comes down lower than 5500 I'd be very concerned about this being a major WXY this being W this being X this being Y and uh, Y as a preliminary target would be around 2.2 K that's what I'd be looking at so um, yeah that's pretty much how I want to uh, summarize everything in today's uh, chart so I think I've mentioned everything I wanted to say um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed the content. Leave a like if you have and uh, any queries, put them down in the comments. And um, yeah, don't forget that, that that discount is there. So very cheap, £10 a month for, for the first month. And um, it's only available for the next couple of days. So uh, check out the li link to that. I'll mark it very clearly as the first link in the description to this video. So yeah, check that out if interested. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up there. All right, take care.